I'm Adil Kumar and in this video we'll try to understand how to graph the equation r equals to 2 plus cos theta. Now in this you will see that 2 is greater than the coefficient of cosine theta and once that is the case we do get a graph which is well known by the name Lemecon's without inner loop graph. Now to begin with we should look into symmetry. As you know, polar graphs could have three types of symmetry, right? Three types of symmetry. One, they could be symmetric about the polar axis. So that is the polar axis. They could be symmetric about the y-axis or they could be symmetric about the pole itself. Now, when we have this function, r equals to 2 plus cosine theta, now cos is an even function. So, so, so the equation here could be written as since it is function of theta, I could write this as r as f of theta equals to 2 plus cos theta, right? Now let us test for the value, what happens for f of minus theta. So if I substitute theta with minus, I get 2 plus cos of minus theta, which is same as 2 plus cos theta or f of theta. So if f of minus theta equals to f of theta, it means the graph is symmetric about what? Graph is symmetric about polar axis, right? The horizontal polar axis, that is what it is. Now once we know that, then we no, that we could only take values of from 0 to pi, right? And then plot those values and reflect them to get the rest. So that helps us to restrict our values, right? So, so that's a big advantage. So in this case, what we will do is for the given function, we'll take values of theta from 0 to 2 pi, right? So we'll just make a table of values here and calculate the values of theta and f of theta and we'll start with zero take few values calculate using calculator so here i have uh, pi by three i mean sorry pi by six this is pi by three this is pi by two so this is two pi by this is one two pi by three five pi by six and this is pi for us right it's already written so let's take these values, plot them, and see what do we get, right? So we have, uh, we'll take 0, pi by 6, pi by 3, pi by 2, 2 pi by 3, 5 pi by 6, and pi, right? So we'll take these values, calculate, and then plot. That's the idea, right? So some of them will be decimals. We just take a calculator we say 2 plus cos of 0 so let me write down cos of 0 I know you know the results anyway so it is 3 okay so this is what we get here now I'll change this value to pi by 6 so this is pi divided by 6 and that is equal to in decimals 2.86 let me write 2.9 here okay and then we'll change this value to pi by 3 equals to, in decimals, 2.5. Then now to pi by 2, pi by 2 equal to 2. And now we'll do it 2 pi by 3. So, so we have 2 pi by 3. Uh, equals to in decimals 1.5 okay 5 pi by 6 so let's get back to the equation it says 5 pi by 6 equals to in decimals it is I mean 1.13 okay so let me redo this okay i'm not very sure of this calculation so we'll redo it okay five pi by six right that's fine okay equals to in decimals 1.13 okay 1.13 
and for pi and for pi you get what equals to 1 right so cos of pi is minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so we get these values correct so once we get these values we can plot them so we'll get the upper half I mean and then we'll plot them and get the lower half values correct so let's begin by plotting 0 3 0 3 means point is right there so this is 1 2 and 3 0 radians with polar axis pi by 6 2.9 so very close to 3 so that means let's say 2.9 is here then pi by 3 is 2.5 so midway between these two okay and then 2 pi by 3 is uh, sorry so at pi by 2 it is 2 so we get here pi by 2 is 2 and 2 pi by 3 is 1.5 so midway between here 1.5 5 pi by 6 is 1.13 so close to 1 but kind of close to, okay and then we get the value at 1 at 1 so these are the points which we get so it's kind of graph which is like this so we can join this uh, with with a curve so let me just join them with a curve kind of like this right so that's the graph we get now we can find the other points which is reflect them right so we have slightly more than one here then on this line it is kind of a, let's get back to it so 3 2.9 so here we get 2.9 close 2.5 so we're just reflecting them right we're just reflecting them so we have 2.5 midway and the next time we get 2 and then we get 1.5 so between 1 and 2 here and then we have this point so we can join this so we have this kind of a function here so so it's kind of uh, uh, so here it is that is how you get a shape right so it is without inner loop you saw that if the coefficient of cos is higher than this value then we got we got something in the center right something like this so there is no inner loop in this particular graph and that is how you get the graph of this function r equals to 2 plus cosine theta i hope these steps help you to understand how to sketch these graphs i'm anil kumar you can always share and subscribe my videos thank you and all the best